Yo, what's up, guys? It's Steven. I'm with Jeff Baluku today. Um, welcome, Jeff. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, so guys, I have Jeff here because um, he's one of those guys that I met and I was like, I have to have him on. Uh, I love his heart for my city, Bujumbura. So I was born in Burundi, as most of you know, and just coming here, meeting a guy who's from another country, serving my country, and then seeing his passion. Because at that time, he was, you know, preparing for the Pomoja Festival, which he'll talk about, you know, sooner or later. And Jeff, you're like, I don't know, you're electrifying. I remember we were at the beach. Thank you, man. That's that's a compliment. I receive it. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, I just, you know, for me, the question is just like, who are you? How did you even come here? What? What led you to do these things? No many people I see doing what you're doing, you know? Yeah. How did you get here? Um, well, I was from Maz. Well, no, come on, man. I'm just kidding. Well, um, it's very interesting to cut the long story short. Um, the church that I come from always does a, what we call my miracle offering. Every year we give money and support to any church around the world. So when it came to this time in Uganda, it's called Watoto Church. It's like we want to support a church in Burundi, a church plant in Burundi. So, you know, we did the same. We, 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 everybody, you know, digs deep in their pockets to support a mission in Burundi. So I also dug deep into my pocket. And I remember by then I had like $100 written on my name. And I was like, God, I say I believe in you. And the scripture I stood upon, I, it was more like a wise man wins, wins souls. It's somewhere in Proverbs. And I invested, you know, uh, that into that mission in Burundi. A couple of, you know, months later, my youth pastor comes to me. He's like, oh, Jeff, would you go to Burundi? I'm like, huh? So in my head, I was like, dude, I just gave my money down there. You want me to follow it? Come on. Come and on. And I was like, you know, I said, you know what? Give me time, you know. Let me pray about it and see what's up. And, you know, I prayed about it. And my heart was like, okay, dude. In my own view, I was like, go down there for six months, do what you need to do. So the job was to come down, help the church plant, find a couple of people, train them to see how they can do youth work. Um, so I come down here and man, I love the place. People appreciate me. We appreciate each other. Down here, nine years down the road, here we are. Nine years? Yeah, man. Nine years. Tell me your first year. I just want to hear about the first year, Jeff. What was it like? So first year, um, I usually tell this story. Um, so I come at the airport, you know, and man, I'm looking at the airport. I'm like, is this the airport? <laughs> and I know uh, the feeling, man. Yeah, is this the airport? I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. So guys, welcome us. And the guy who picked me is actually one of uh, the founder members. He's he's a construction guy. So he was getting his hands dirty. So he comes to the airport picking me up with shorts and bruises. And I'm like, for real, this is a war-torn area, man. This guy even has bruises or something like that. So you had this image of Burundi being at war. And, you know, you could probably imagine going into Ukraine. That was more like my, my mind. I'm like, man, I'm going to a war-torn, you know, area. And, but you know what? It was totally different from what I had in view. Man, sometimes media can flip up stories you know right right and here i am i meet beautiful people beautiful culture and you know i fell in love with it first time people that are willing willing to learn welcoming and you know what we thought we had come to teach people but we actually learned from them come on you know and we planted the church it's thriving you know it's a french burundi is a french speaking country right and here we are planting an english speaking country that was crazy for starters wow so you come here to plant an english-speaking church yes in a french country yes what courage surely but you know what it's it's amazing that you know amidst the whole big mass there's lots of people who are actually interested in an english-speaking church because there are expatriates people from other places that we know are looking for a place to worship and we you know guys who want to learn english as well plugged in easily and that's how we're able to skyrocket the ministry wow so yeah. like jeff tell me like what so like that first year you come in you're plugged in as like you know like in the church planting season so like mm -hmm. how do you get your 
you know, like in a sense, like for you, you know, when you go home, what mm. was that like? Like finding friends, right? You have to start over. Because yeah. did you come with anyone or was it just you? So we came as a team from different countries. So that's also another dynamic, getting used to <laughs> a team from different countries. That's How many part countries? Of Which quarter. countries? Kenya, uh, you, Kenya, Rwanda. Um, there was a guy from the UK. Mm -hmm. And then Comant, who was our founder, but he originally from Canada, but he's lived in Africa for a long time. So you're having a mixture of cultures in one place. Right. And we're trying to figure out. On top of that, we're trying to learn the locals. So, you know, with my, you know, God gives us character and personalities for a reason. I'm an easygoing person. I connect with everybody. So I, I could easily find a common ground. If I found people playing football, I would jump in. I'm like, yeah, you know, Messi, you know, you know, whatever could connect us. And exactly. Um, music. I realized guys here loved music. So I, I looked for popular artists that I could, you know, become friends with and Man, I met this guy called Fabrice mm -hmm. Zaymana. He's one of the popular artists here. And he was a nice guy. He literally introduced me to the whole town. Really? Yeah, he opened up. I, he opened up like a window. I opened up the whole door, you know, like a guy. <laughs> just, you know, like Amir says, oh, this is who I knew. He'd be like, ah, oh, what's your name? Okay, can I have your number? You know, literally. And that's how I got connected. And the funny one, you know, um... It so happened that there was a Ugandan friend that had come here. We used to work together in one company back at home. We used to work in, in MTN with him. Mm -hmm. So he had come here and he was helping a company. Right. So that dude invites me for a drink up. Okay. It was like, because he had been here long and all that stuff. So he invites me for a drink up. When I'm talking about a drink up, I mean like an alcohol, right. heavy drinking and smoking. You know, imagine right craziness like these guys were turning up <laughs> and here i am in the midst of all this i'm new anyway right. he's introducing me to his friends and all that stuff and they come to me so what do you do in life i looked at her i can't say i'm a preacher right now because i'm already deep cover you know i'm like i'm a market here so they're like what do you market i say i, I market behavior products and the guy looks at me so everybody's high meanwhile <laughs> so this guy sits down and zones in on me. Like everybody's right. partying. They're like, oh, that guy. So they're like, okay, let's get him a beer. And I'm like, ah, no, I'm okay. I'm all right. Let's get him wine. I'm like, ah, I'm all right. So then this guy, because he's already zoned in into me, he brings a product and it was, um, it was a mouth. I still say no because I didn't know whether it was actually alcohol because it was a local brand. Mm. And this guy, like, who are you really? You know, the way you talk, you sound like a churchy guy. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I work with the church. It's like, but what are you doing here? It's like, I'm hanging out with my clients. You're my client, my guy. The guy laughed. And from that time, <laughs> he became my friend. And he also opened up a whole world door to the corporate world. Yeah. And, you know, up to now, every time I sit back and I see in the city, it's like, you see what, literally in that place, it's like I met all the doorways to the city as well. You know, it's those little things that, you know, introduce you to different circles of people. I just love that. Yeah. I'm a marketeer. Yeah. <laughs> you're sure. my client. Yeah, you're my client. I'm like, we have branches all over the world, you know. We deal in behavior change, <laughs> you know. Isn't that what the church does? <laughs> <laughs> yo that's good i'm gonna have to use that yeah ah. yeah dude so so you know those funny you know things just get people's hearts warmed up and all that stuff and that's how i got friends in the city right yeah that's amazing man that's amazing i'm really yeah that's like just to see how much you've had impact in this city yeah in just Thank nine you. years is like amazing yeah i'm honored so, like, if someone is having that moment right now, is listening to this, yeah. and they're thinking about going into a different culture yeah. to, like, follow God's calling over their life, yeah. what would you say to them? As we close these kind of, like, yeah. podcasts, like, what would be your advice? What kind of mindsets? What kind of things do you think you wish you'd have known before you moved to Burundi to, to live? Because you've married a Burundian. For sure, man. You can, yeah, yeah sure. I, I think Jesus gave us a blueprint. He said, carry your sandals and go. You know, 
you cannot have the entire money of what you're going to find there. You know, you're dealing with human beings, you're dealing with cultures. All you need to be is be open-hearted. Right. And especially if you're missionary, don't go there saying, you know what, I know better than them. They will learn from me. Tell you, be shocked. You'll be learning from them too as well. Exactly. It's just having a very accommodative um, heart and willing to learn. But also what I realize in every culture, there's always this one um, common factor. You find a ball, football. You find rhythm, dance, music. Right. Then you find food. And those are all what we call um, common grounds that you sit down and crack a conversation around. So you as a person, you need to be, how do we say, um, sensitive right, to right. see what are the common grounds you can have a conversation. And you have to be looking out for them. You're like, yeah, is that popcorn? Yeah, we do have popcorns back home. What do you guys put in the popcorn? It's like, we, we put salt. No, you put sugar. You know, it'd be like, <laughs> wow, that is interesting. And a conversation begins from there. You need to be able to find common grounds. Right. And right. that's how you win yourselves into people's hearts. And they themselves win the, themselves into your heart. And ministry becomes way better. And for me, the key is love the people that you're going to minister to. That's Whoa. it. Shoot, man. Like, it's, it, we need to get some quotes out of this one. Like, this is like some good stuff. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. yeah. No, honestly, I think, like, you make it simple. Yeah. That's what I love about what you just say. It's like, you make it simple. It's just yeah. like about going into a culture and, like, loving the people in front of you. Like, actually enjoying them. Yeah. And loving them. Yeah. I mean, love is an energy. You can't, you, you can't hide away from that. Even if I expressed it in a lo wrong way, for, for, for starters, like I come from Uganda. We, we, don't, we are not huggy-huggy, you know? Right. But Burundians are huggy, you know? And when people would hug me, I'll be like, this feels genuine, but doesn't feel like me. But I had to <laughs> learn, like, okay, this is how they express love. Right, right. Yeah, this is how they express love. So you, you tag along. You're like, okay, this is how it is. That's why Paul says, when I go to Rome, I become a Roman. Right, right. Yeah. Everybody, everyone loves it when a foreigner appreciates their culture. No, it's so true. Yeah. It's so, so true. And that's what you do. Man, thank you so much, Jeff. This was yeah. a good session. Um, I want to have you back again for the next one. I'm excited to hear more about how you came in, not only thrived, but also did something crazy a big festival which i want to hear in the next episode but okay. thank you so much for coming on and yeah talking to us about your story thank you man thank you for having me hopefully somebody has learned something from this uh, yes sir all right all right that's a wrap guys i'll see you next time ciao ciao